Hey friends, it's Brian and it's time for Jeep video number 58. Yeah, I've been working on this while. I'm really, really excited about what I'm about to work on. Um, so when I bought this Jeep, one of the problems that I knew it had is that it had been hit across the vehicle and it caused the engine to break one of the engine mounts and fall over. Um, and it sheared two of the bosses of the three, and a boss is a place where a bolt goes into the side of the engine. So um, I'm going to take a little detour and just kind of talk about this because I'm really excited about what's in this box. The fix for this problem is in this box. So when an insurance company looks at a vehicle, um, they will perform a calculation of the cost to repair the vehicle versus the value of the vehicle. And an insurance company won't take into account what most of us would consider common sense repairs. I broke an engine mount. There's an aftermarket replacement. Aftermarket replacement's 500 bucks. Insurance company says, you broke an engine mount, the block is bad, we owe to put it back the way it was. So we're going to buy you a whole new engine. Well, there's half the cost of your Jeep right there. And it probably broke this, and it probably broke that, and it broke a frame, so we'll buy you a whole new frame. And it broke a fender, so we'll buy you a fender. And it popped two airbags, and guess what? We're way over the cost of the Jeep, so we'll just buy the Jeep from you for fair market value. And that's great, because then what they do is they turn around and sell the vehicle at a salvage auction. And it either goes to a dismantler, a junkyard, or some crazy, brave person like me who says, yeah, it's not that bad, I'll put it back together. So I bought this knowing it had bad engine mounts. <coughs> and going, I think I can fix this. There's a couple companies that make these, and quite frankly, I am, if I had my machining tools set up a little more, I probably would just made this shit myself, because I am a pretty good fabricator. But I elected to just fix it by buying the tool. So I went and bought Brown Dog Motor Mounts. Brown Dog is a small company out of Arizona. Let's see, um, Queen Creek, Arizona, wherever the hell that's at. I think that's uh, Phoenix area. Um, these were, do, 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 doesn't, I got an invoice here. So I will pull out my invoice and read it. $516.95 including shipping. I'm really, really happy to support another small American business. Uh, Brown Dog has a great reputation. I will put a link in the video to them. Uh, I get nothing from them other than good karma. So we're going to unbox this. Really well packed. Lots of packing paper. Um, this is how it should be. So there's one of our engine mounts. And here is another of our engine mounts. Man, that's heavy. And then I've got the actual parts that go on the frame. And that's it. I'm going to extract the parts that go in the trash. And um, let me get these unwrapped. So we'll start with this piece. Oh, these are pretty. Now I went with the rubber mounts. They make these in both rubber and they also make them in uh, polyurethane. But I wanted a little softer ride because my fat ass likes to be comfortable. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful engine mount. Nice powder coat job, US made, real American made product. It's just a pleasure to find well made American products. I don't know why Arizona is a hotbed of that, but it's awesome. Um, Alright, let's see how to get this open without scratching it.
see any bolts. Uh, it was supposed to have a full set of bolts. Perhaps it's in, yes, it's in here. So these are super well labeled, um, passenger side, and that's going to be over here. aggressive with the shrink wrap, but at least it's packaged well. Nice set of hardware. And then this is the driver's side, which is actually the side that is damaged. Alright, so here are all the bolts. They are individually packaged. That's really, really nice. They're even labeled. So each... This is getting dangerous here. So each side... It says driver's side. Passenger side install the driver's side first. I don't think it matters in my case. Motor mount replacement hardware. And then these are the bolts that go through the motor mounts. And I mean, again, just beautiful, beautiful A plus job on the fabrication, A plus job on the labeling and bonus points for separating the hardware out. I absolutely love it when vendors take the time to do this stuff correctly. Now, I need to stop and I need to go RTFM need to read the fucking manual before I start working on this so I understand what they have in mind with where things mount and how they mount. So, let me go and do that and I'll be back. Hey friends, so I got the brush in from Amazon. Uh, it took a day to come in. Um, Harbor Freight does sell these, but it's $20 for a set of brushes. I only wanted the one brush. So here's what the brush looks like up close. And what I'm going to do is use this to ream the holes. And I also discovered that I have a broken bolt on this side. So I'm going to relocate the camera so you guys can see in more detail what I'm doing. All right, so I've got a broken boss here and a broken boss there. And then that's the third one that sheared a bolt. So unfortunately, standard engine mount no longer works. And what Brown Dog brings to the table are seven mounting locations. Here, 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 and two underneath that you can't see. And so that's gonna take us from three holes to seven, knowing that we can't use two of them, so at least five. So it's still an improvement, and it should rehabilitate this engine by using these two, this one, and this one, and this one. But this broken off bolt needs to be dealt with. So we're gonna start here. And this one is just enough to not be a pain in the ass. Uh, if there was, if this had broken off and it wants to, all right. 
So let me get this on here really good. Yeah, this is being a pain in the ass. Let's see if maybe a different set. I'm gonna see if a smaller set of pliers will grab onto here a little better. No. It's just the way this is sheared and that I don't have very much of it available. Okay, not a problem. So at this point, we're just gonna punch it out. So that got us enough to the point where we can unscrew it. So we had a little thread deformation here, so, but it seems to be okay. So let me put this in the recycle bin so I can be kind to the earth. Um, put these away so I can find them again. Yes, I just throw them in a drawer. It is what it is. All right, so, Time for some WD-40. WD-40 is not a lubricant. It is a mild solvent and a um, water dispersant. So I'm gonna chuck it up in my small drill because I don't get enough use out of this anyway. Okay, so I just wanna clean the threads. I actually think that one can be put to use. That one's toast. All right, so now we're gonna get into these that have not been used. one left and we need to figure out what size this is so we can pull this off and this is a tab from uh, this is for one of the hoses or hose sets I don't remember which one um, so let's start with this I don't think that's the right size nope This is a 
16 millimeter uh, bolt head. So we will take this off. I don't think we need to clean this one, but I'm going to anyway. Actually, no, I'm not. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, the next thing is we need to get the WD-40 out of these holes. So we got one, two, three, four holes that need the WD-40 removed. And um, the only way I can think of to do that is acetone and turning the engine. Now, if I had the acetone in a spray bottle, that would work. But I don't, so I'm just going to turn the engine. These are things I can't do in a... Uh, I had a little oil leak here. Um, so this is stuff that I would... Yeah, let me see if I can find a spray bottle. So I've got a solution to this that's easy peasy. Um, turns out I have some lab grade squirt bottles from another project. So I put acetone in them. Acetone is an excellent degreaser and it will drive all of the grease out of there promptly. One more shot. All right, let me put my acetone away and we'll get to the next step. So the first thing that I'm doing is figuring out what bolts go where because I have a whole bunch of bolts that are essentially identical in appearance. Some of them are metric and some of them are standard. Guessing that this one is different for a reason. All right, and then I have two leftover bolts that I don't think I can. I think I can actually get a little bit out of this one. Yeah, there's a little bit of grab there, so I'm going to put that one in. Worst will happen is it'll fall out. Uh, this one's toast. Mm. 
<clears throat> thought about putting some JB Weld on here, but I mean, again, that's just toast. So, all right, so we know that this one is the weird one, so we'll set it to the side. And the rest of them appear to be the same. And that's good. Some of these are longer than others. So I think we're going to have to check the depth of the bosses. Uh, if you don't have one of these, um, you should get one. So that is 0 0.99, 0 0.98, 1 inch, 0 0.99, 0 0.99. So these are 0 0.90, 0 0.90, 0 0.99, 0 0.90, well they all look like they're the same. And then I've got one that is 0.7. Not sure what the purpose of that one is. Um, Let me uh, look at the instructions real quick and see if there's a... Some of the bolts are shallow, so let me see what's going on with that. Right back. Okay, so the instructions call for the 20 millimeter bolts to go here and the longer bolts to go everywhere else. So, that's what we'll do. Now, it does also call for permanent thread locker and 40 foot-pounds of torque. And this is part of the reason that you want to use acetone to clean the bolt holes so you get good... Um, you don't want grease in your... Um, You don't want oil or grease when you're trying to use thread locker. Now, the I don't understand why you would mix metric and standard fasteners on an engine. Um, to me, that is just stupid, beyond stupid, beyond stupid. Uh, speaking of stupid, let me find this. And then I've got two that are difficult to reach. And if I was working on this in the vehicle, this would be a giant pain in the ass. I mean, just getting past the pre-cats would be really, really difficult at this point. Now I need to figure out what size. So these are 15 millimeters. No, they are not. That one is.
17 millimeters. Which is three quarters. Let me see if three quarters fits properly. No, 17 millimeter head fits better. Bizarre. All right, whatever. So we're set to 40 foot-pounds and we're going to go ahead and torque these down. extension to reach the ones that are back behind so let me find that real quick I don't like to use extensions with torque wrenches because they can cause issues but this will be okay We have a couple of bonus holes left over. And if you remember, this was the one that had some thread, but it was basically sheared off. So I'm gonna goop up the red thread locker and just see what this gets us. Let's see if we can torque this one to value. I don't expect much, but we're gonna try. <clears throat> because we got a hole there and uh, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No. Nope. It rotates out. So. Best of times, worst of luck. Nothing happens here. Nothing happens, so those go to recycle. Okay, so Brown Dog recommends that you install the uh, this piece before you um, get any further. And they said sometimes this is a little tight, but this, this clearance here looks almost perfect. Um, so this is how it's gonna mount in the engine. They said that factory is from the front back. But that ain't gonna work, so we're gonna come from the back forward. And we've already made our first mistake. We need to install one of the washers. Yeah, double check the permit the instructions.
Let's see. Yeah, all right, so we're, we appear to be good. And these are our prevailing torque nuts is what they say. Oh yeah, they have a little lip there. So let me see what size wrenches I need for this. I'll be right back. Okay, so this requires a 19 millimeter um, socket and uh, I'm gonna use a box wrench on the other end. fix that. Alright, so I can't get in there with that, but I can get in here with this. And this will simplify my life. We are not supposed to crunch this. All we need to do is back it off just a little bit. So you back it off a quarter of a turn at a time. And we want to be able to just move the uh, washers. So I think we're there. I can barely rotate this washer, so that means that this is where we want it. Let me double check the instructions. I think that's what he says to do. Yeah, he says uh, you want these to move with your fingers, but not more. I think it needs just a little bit tighter. Um, So that, that lets them move, but not much. All right, so now we're gonna set up for the other side. We'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so this is uh, essentially the same three bolts. And then uh, I gotta see which ones are involved here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know. Let's see how many we're, we're dealing with here. It's interesting, we get some adjustability on this side and we've got some inserts. Uh, this is an interestingly, okay, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do what we did on the other one. Add some WD-40. I don't think that's a hole.
though. It is a hole. It's just full of nastiness. Learn something new every day. for the acetone trick so uh, let me get my little bottle and my acetone acetone slamble so you know um, adult activities should engage in adult risk management which your definition of risk management and my definition of risk management are very likely two different things I don't smoke, so this isn't a big deal for me. I'm not worried about the excess acetone. It will flash off and evaporate pretty quickly. But I do want to pour my leftover, or attempt to pour my leftover back into um, the can because acetone's kind of expensive. All right, no, it's, it's expensive and um, it will attack plastics, although this should be a lab safe plastic. Acid proof and acetone proof should be pretty similar. All right, give me a minute to figure out the bolts and I'll be back. All right, so again, we have three sizes of bolts in our kit and um, the long one is gonna go down here. So we'll set that there. The standard one is gonna go here. So we'll verify this. Yes, that is correct. And then everybody else is getting the same size, which is M1025. All right, so we're going to give this a minute to flash off. Um, yeah, it hadn't quite completely evaporated, so let me give that a chance to evaporate while I go use the restroom. All right, so everything has had a chance to thoroughly dry. Well, we're gonna squirt a bunch of red permanent thread locker in here, Harbor Freight's finest and cheapest. this goes in. Ah, the sound of thread locker squirting out.
this has never had a bolt in it, so it might be a little spicy. Uh, same as this one. Okay, so we're going to make this a little easier by putting a ratchet to, to use. Probably need to loosen all these because that one seems to be just a touch off. was a touch off so I had to pick the the uh, engine mount up and then I'm just gonna snug all these time to torque everything so we're going to get the torque wrench which is already set to the 40 foot pounds that the specification calls for Okay, now I'm going to double check everything. We've got the uh, actual engine mount. Be right back. Okay, so this side needs to face out, so we'll rotate it this way and then we'll insert it this way. And this one's got really good access, so it doesn't matter, except that we keep forgetting to put the washer on. I think 
that's right, but I'm going to go ahead and back it off until I know it is. I'd like to see those just a little tighter. Yeah, there we go. So I can rotate these freely a little too freely. I want them to just barely move. Okay, so that's good. It's free, but it's not free. Okay, so there we go. Engine mounts are installed. Uh, and that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I will post links, uh, including to Brown Dog. Uh, excellent instructions and look like really solid uh, motor mounts. Um, I think if I was doing this, I would have extended it back to here. And then on the other side, I would have brought it forward uh, one more bolt because steel's cheap. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. But um, I think this is more than sufficient. But again, my motto is build it so I'll never have to build touch it again. Um, anyway... Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, hit that alert icon or the bell so you find out when I release new videos, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments.